hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is v if you have been following me then you kind of know a little bit about my story if you are new to my channel then i'm veronica um i am currently uh, living in san antonio texas and i have been on a journey with pcos endometrial cancer and now trying to conceive so Again, I became cancer free as of December 21st and I had already been taking Ovacetol at the time and been doing a lot of extensive research as to what I should be taking to help manage my PCOS naturally because for me that's a big goal is to be more natural rather than taking m multiple medications um, from the doctor only because that is what I choose. I'm not saying that it's not right or it is right it's just a choice that I have made so because of the ovocetol I have we have people our dietitians I'm sorry that work for HEB and I reached out to her within 10 days because I knew how important it was to kind of have a better grasp on what vitamins should I be taking what should I be eating and just overall knowledge to understand my body better because I'm an advocate for myself and I need to know what's happening with my body. If I don't stand up for myself, then nobody's going to do it. It's clearly, the doctors didn't know shit because I ended up with cancer. Excuse my language. So, if you're here, then either you have PCOS, you think you have PCOS, or you're just curious about PCOS. So what is PCOS? Um, in a nutshell, to me, PCOS is simply a hormonal imbalance in which women carry. The technical definition of PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, is an endocrine disorder characterized by high levels of male hormones. And that's kind of why I don't like that definition because I feel like it's so negative to say that we carry so many male hormones. like. It's already bad enough that we have a hormonal imbalance, but now you want to just say that we have too many male hormones. Like, no, we just have an imbalance of hormones. Um, that's just my feeling. Sorry, guys. Unfortunately, it is. It's not extremely common, but it is common. Um, one in 10 American women who are of childbearing age will have PCOS. And unfortunately, it can lead to infertility, which not everybody who has PCOS is suffering from infertility that is a really big misconception that you have pcos you will not be able to have a child that's not a clear statement or a factual statement i'm sorry um it does lead to acne and according to research it's for some reason a, a lot around the jaw around your chin um i've never experienced that before a lot of people that i do know do have that or did have that um of course there's unwanted hair growth my least favorite um, dry itchy skin and baldness and of course insulin resistance so some of the symptoms that you may experience with PCOS are abdominal weight gain which that is me difficulty losing weight that is me <laughs> heavy or irregular menstrual cycles that is me where mine are just completely absent intense carbohydrate cravings oh my gosh that is me um, of course, there's some other things that are possible, which are like low blood sugars, um, which lead to nausea, dizziness, and things like that. But um, those are some of the symptoms in which you can experience. The only thing I don't like on this paper, and this is something that my dietitian gave me. I'm just simply reading off of it. It's just very informative. Um, and I'm going to read this word for word. This is not me, me um, putting my own spin on it. The goal of treatment is to maintain a healthy weight and decrease the risk of developing type 2 diabetes or heart disease. Having a healthy weight can improve insulin resistance and fertility and decrease the risk for developing diabetes. That's how I feel about that. First of all, having PCOS and losing weight is the hardest battle. Now you're probably thinking, well, V, you lost 108 pounds. Yeah, I did. But now that I'm here at this point, it is extremely difficult for me to drop a pound. Like, I am, 
I don't want to say depriving myself, but I'm depriving myself of things that I would enjoy um, more often because I can't really have them because I could probably eat a bag of lettuce right now and I would gain five fucking pounds. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's just how frustrating it is with the weight loss. Um, when I was a lot heavier, um, I was way over 300 pounds. Sad to say, but I was. Um, I was eating horribly, horribly, um, eating out, eating, you know, I'm Hispanic. I'm from Texas. We eat Tex-Mex, Hispanic food, whatever, Mexican food. I ate that like crazy tacos. Oh my gosh. If you're from Texas, South Texas, tacos are like the breakfast staple. Um, I just had no, um, What's the word I'm looking for? I had no reservations when it came to the food that I was consuming. I ate whatever I want and it reflected upon my body. So going from that to drastically changing my eating habits, the weight melted off. I was going to the gym five days a week, sometimes doing two days. I was I was addicted. Um, and that's something else that I've been trying to address within myself because I do tend to have... Um, I don't even know what the word is because I don't want to say I have tendencies of being addicted to things, but I fixate on things and I noticed changes. I noticed how confident I was feeling. I noticed all these things and I just was so drawn to working out because that is what was giving me those changes. But to say that losing weight will change your PCOS or make your PCOS go away that is by far from the truth because I did lose 108 pounds and my PCOS I feel like became worse it didn't become better that's when the cancer came about that's when I definitely did not start a cycle even though I was told multiple times lose weight and your cycle will come back never happened do we need to eat differently from other people I'm learning yes do we need to watch what we eat as all people do, we need to be aware that our PCOS causes certain things within us. For example, the intense carbohydrate cravings. I can now reflect upon that and see that that is an actual thing. I could rant on, on and on about this, but I just wanted to give you like an overview of what PCOS is. We've talked about it before, but again, my goal was to maintain my or manage my PCOS in a natural way to help me conceive a child and to help balance my hormones in a better way. So I currently am taking five different supplements and ovocetol. That is the, the vitamins and supplements in which I'm taking. And then I do take two medications for my PCOS, which are, of course, the metformin and I have thyroid issues now. So I've talked about this before you know I love this stuff if you don't please check my videos I don't have many but ovocetol was something that I talked about very early and when I went to my dietitian excuse me inositol which again I'm not going to go too far in depth with this inositol is a component of ovocetol it is broken down into two components and ovocetol has both of them but my dietitian told me the number one supplement that she could recommend to me was inositol. So inositol does help with weight loss. It does help improve cholesterol levels. And it does, over time, help improve your cycles. And it helps with quali egg qualities. Um, I don't know if this is truly what's helping me with my weight loss or simply counting calories again, going low carbs. Um, it, it could be a, a factor in it, but I couldn't say 100% that, oh, I haven't changed anything else because that's not the truth. I have been changing my eating habits. I have been working out and I have been taking Ovacetol. Definitely look into this product. I'm not sponsored in any way. They are not paying me to talk about this. I'm just a firm believer that this is something that is needed for someone who has PCOS. Again, my opinion, not an expert, I'm not a doctor, because I have heard people say, you know, V, I have been taking Ovacetol and I haven't noticed changes. For one, be patient, because you can't expect to take this and then tomorrow you get your period. If you've had PCOS for many, many years, your body has been out of whack for that long, 
a supplement is not going to change your PCOS overnight. So please be aware that patience is key. Stick with it. Persistence is key, as corny as it sounds, but definitely give it a try. Give it at least a solid three months. And then if you don't really have a noticeable difference, then stop taking it. Um, so the next one that I'm going to talk about is something called NAC. Now, this is technically called N-acetylcysteine, and it's a white pill, sorry, just like this. Um, each pill is 600 milligrams. I do have to take three pills of these a day, so I take one at lunch, and then I take two at dinner. Again, I found this at H-E-B. It was, I think, $15 for the bottle, um, but it, it's... It doesn't really have a horrible taste it's there i mean you know that it's there but it's nothing that i would say like oh my gosh it's horrible um but with that actual supplement it is said to improve fertility decrease inflammation and lower those ugly male extra hormones that we have so definitely look into that if you if you don't live in san antonio or texas and have an hb look on amazon i think i found it on amazon but i just didn't want to wait for it to be shipped to my house so i'm kind of impatient like that so the next one and i was told about this one through my endocrinologist only because as we all know a lot of people tend to be vitamin d deficient but i was told that i was severely <laughs> deficient in vitamin d and unfortunately a lot of people who have pcos this is something very common with them so i do take the vitamin d pills I take the 5,000 units per day um, only because, I, like I said, I was that deficient. And this is the small little pill. It's very, very small. It's like a clear gold. That's kind of contradicting, but a goldish, yellowish color. Um, my endocrinologist did tell me that if it didn't improve, I would have to start taking the 50,000 units a week. Think fully it hasn't got there but this is said to improve your insulin response improve bmi improve cholesterol levels and also help with regulating your cycles um i'm not again it's unfortunate because i have an iud i cannot speak on that i really wish i could you'd be surprised how bad i want a cycle like i want to see ant flu like tomorrow I know that sounds crazy but it's just I don't know I want to be of knowledge that I'm okay even though I know I'm cancer free it's just something that is in my mind anyways so the next one of course from my endocrinologist um, was B12 again from HEB sorry guys I shop at HEB all the time that's my style I actually work for HEB so just kind of drawn to them but this is a pill, it's like a pink, it almost looks like um, a sweet tart, kind of. <laughs> but this one is the thousand micro, micrograms, maybe? It says MCG, couldn't really tell you guys. Um, I don't know if that's gonna focus. Probably not. But yeah, so this one, I don't really have like informative information as to what it helps does, what it helps to do. But it definitely has, I've seen a big change in my energy levels. Um, I've noticed a lot of hair growth in a good way, <laughs> like not in random places, but um, my hair tends to be really thin and I've noticed a lot of like extra hair growth up here, like little baby hairs um, down here on the bottom as well. So it might be doing something good. I wanna believe that it's doing something good. <laughs> um, my skin has definitely cleared up a lot with these vitamins and not that i ever really had acne but it just seems more even if you will now granted i have a lot of makeup on right now but um it, it just looks better guys <laughs> so another one this is by far not my favorite not that i have a favorite in these but fish oil now this was recommended by my dietitian um unfortunately i don't i was looking for the information as to like what this specifically helps with um i know it does help with your cycles to regulate your cycles to help ovulation and if i'm not mistaken i hope i'm not giving you the wrong information um and definitely it helps with your um a lot of them actually if i'm not mistaken all of them helped with um patients bmi like lowering it 
but I was told from her, and I don't know if this is just specific to me, but that I needed to take the one with the highest omega content. And this one has a thousand milligrams. Now, imagine guys, this is a freaking fish oil pill. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I take all my pills at lunchtime. And this is by far the grossest pill ever. It never fails about 30 minutes after taking my pills. Like I go eat my lunch, I come back to my desk and I know I gotta take these pills. 30 minutes later, it's like a fish. I call it a fish burp because I feel like I just ate fish and I'm burping it up. It is very gross. Unfortunately, I've had to become used to it, but beware if you take that vitamin, expect the fish burps, yuck. So lastly, of course, from HEB is my prenatal vitamin. Everybody knows what a prenatal vitamin is. If you don't know, it's a vitamin to take before, before, during, and if I'm not mistaken, you can take it after pregnancy to just help your body. This is a pill here. Um, this was um, suggested by my endo only because we know that I want to get pregnant. So from his suggestion it is to help basically prepare my body give me the vitamins in which i need um, to help conceive a child and carry a child um, i was taking folic acid and he suggested suggested not to take it i don't know if it's because the prenatal has folic acid i've been doing research to show that people with pcos sometimes don't react to folic acid so i'm not quite sure that's something i've been wanting to talk to him about but as I mentioned, I do take my pills at lunchtime and I, guys, I, imagine me carrying all of those pills in my purse. First of all, I used to carry just like a little clutch type of deal and when I started taking all my vitamins, I needed like a grandma purse, no lie. I still carry my grandma purse around but I found these cute little spice jars at Walmart and they're by Pioneer Woman. I love Pioneer Woman, I'm obsessed. But these are like her spice jars, if I'm not mistaken. And I picked up two of them. And this is just what I carry every vitamin in. So instead of having to carry all of those bottles, I just... I don't know if you can see that. I just put all of them in here. On Sunday night, I refill them up. Um, I already know that I have five each day. So I fill them up. I get five pills of each for the bottle sometimes I'll put more if I think I'm going to be traveling that weekend just to have them on hand but I found that this is a lot more convenient and yes it does rattle but it's not as annoying as having all of those bottles in my purse and trying to look for my cell phone or my wallet it's just a lot more convenient and as you see I did do the same thing with my Ovacetol only because this thing is so big guys like it's I mean it's not the worst thing in the world but just to have to lug this around twice a, or your whole day so that you can have it twice a day it's just too much like I'm not about to do that so I got my little spice jar and this is you can't really see I need to actually put some more in here but it's just really convenient guys like I have it in my purse I know that it's there if I'm at work if I'm not in the office if I'm traveling if I'm out on the weekend with friends or whatever the case may be like I always have it with me I don't have to question hey did I bring it did I not whatever the case may be so that's just been working for me maybe you rather carry a pill case it was difficult for me to have a pill case because I do have so many I couldn't find a pill case that was big enough that didn't look like a suitcase so you choose your own battles you do what you like this is just what i do but again um please don't get this information you know misconstrued like oh veronica said i must take these vitamins that is not the truth so don't come at me like that this is just what i take to help my body because i've done research to show that this is something that i should be doing and I know um, a few of you had told me that you have never heard of Avocetol or Inositol and your doctors have actually recommended you not to take it. I don't know what to tell you on that because um, I don't want to tell you something that is not doctor recommended, but I have noticed through my journey that even my doctors were unaware of what Avocetol was or what Inositol was. But yet I go to the dietitian who clearly resides in the same city 
and she had a whole thing of information regarding inositol and the benefits in which or basically how it helps someone with PCOS. So do your research, stand firm. Remember that this is your body. They are your doctor, but you are paying them to be your doctor. So simply, or I should say, just because they tell you to stop or just because they say this or say that, you have a voice and please use your voice because I, I wish I would have gone back or I could go back and tell those doctors like, no, I, I need something to help me. I need this. I need that. But instead, I trusted the doctors because that's what we're taught to do. These people have degrees and, and yes, they're a lot more educated in that field, but they are still people and they are still capable of making mistakes or not having the knowledge because, I mean, I'm sorry to say what male doctor gives two shits about PCOS. He doesn't have PCOS. He doesn't, I mean, if it's not affecting him, if his wife doesn't have it, if he has no knowledge about it, of course, as a regular doctor, a general doctor, a primary care doctor, whatever, I mean, he could just be like, oh yeah, lose weight, because that's what the textbook says. Go ahead and lose weight. You're, if you lose weight, you'll get your period back. And like I've said, that's not the truth. So please be your own advocate and stand up for what you believe. If you've done research and you, you feel that this is the product for you, then take it. You don't have to tell your doctor about it. I I don't think that you're going to grow a third nipple or another limb from Ovacetol. I mean, if you do, then you're magic and you're a unicorn. So <laughs> I'm just saying, let's be real now. But I would definitely not encourage you to take something that I'm not willing to take myself. And clearly, I've been taking this since probably the second week. Well, Ovacetol I've been taking since October and or i'm sorry the last week of october i actually got it october 31st i'll never forget i got it on halloween so i've been taking ovacetol that whole time then i started taking my supplements around the the latter part oh no probably like the second the beginning of the second week of january if i'm not mistaken because my birthday is january 11th and i remember getting them before that so um again do your research if you have questions like i'm here guys i mean i know i'm so busy and i have this wonderful life but <laughs> i'm open to chatting with you i'm open to hearing your stories i really it's unfortunate that we're going through such um crappy circumstances but i really believe in the power of empowering women and we need to empower each other no matter where we are if you're across the United States, if you're not even in the United States, like if I've been through something and my knowledge or experience can benefit you, then that is my purpose. And not to get all kumbaya or godly, but I believe that God has given all of us a purpose. And if my purpose is to help you through your journey, then that will make me the happiest person because I don't want people or women to go through what I went through for the sake of of just who wants to go through cancer because believe me I wish I would have recorded my journey through cancer because it was um shitty emotional draining um expensive as fuck like excuse my language but you can't even afford to be sick in this damn country because Every time they poke you or prick you, it's, you know, a thousand damn dollars. So not only did I have to go through the most emotionally draining experience, but now I'm extremely in debt on top of my college debt. Like, just going to live in freaking debt my whole life. But that's not what this video is about. Again, guys, please message me comments, likes, dislike. Tell me what you want to hear more of. Um, I'm, I'm down to talk. Let's talk, guys. Um... Thank you so much for watching and until next time, see you later.